Hey there, welcome to Lucy Lemire channel. This is your... What? What is this? This is your <laughs> February 27th to the 28th. The month is already over. There seems to be a message at the tip of my frontal lobe that is not coming out. Oh, it's about something. I don't know, someone waiting on the outside for you. Something waiting. Um... Actually, I think by now it's actually too late. Okay, never mind. I was thinking out loud. So I'm going to shuffle. Um, well, this is the deck in my hand right now. So what is the daily guidance for us? So 27th and the 28th, please. Oh, buddy. This is what sucks about this. Let me go pick it up. That is trust. Trust. I don't like working in... Uh, spaces that I don't typically work in because of this is what happens. I like the environment that I um, I typically work in that you guys are typically used to seeing. Maybe I'll do something. Anyway, guidance 27th to 28th of February, please. Guidance to cap our month. Another card falls to the ground. This time, it is the to be fair. So, to me, this feels like things that don't feel entirely as right as they could, as best as they could in the short term, but, and therefore having you to call in your trust um, in your faith, really exercising your faith for the long term. Oh, okay, that's nice. Um, for the long term. Because sometimes things aren't fair, right? Life isn't fair. Um, and we know this. The good people get punished. Bad people don't. Um, good things happen to bad people um, bad things happen to good people, but it's not even like that. It's just, it's just life, you know? Life is life is life is life. It's the most consistently inconsistent, consistent thing that there, there kind of is for us. And we, we make a way, um, in learning and how to move through life. One of those things that we have, one of those tools that we have to navigate ourselves through life is using trust, having faith, having a belief in a higher power, having a belief in our own inner higher power, having belief in other people. And sometimes it can be hard when people have hurt you, people have broke you, people have disappointed you, to continue to have trust in people. I was watching the movie Rampage, and The Rock's character doesn't like people. He prefers animals. Um, I don't like you seeing these periphery things. Um, so there's that. There's learning to love again after being wounded. There is learning to step out, period, into the world after leading sort of a sheltered life. Um, and not even so much sheltered. Let's say you've always been the ugly duckling amongst your friends. When you start doing certain things or when you finally see your own beauty and you see it externally shown to you, um, that can be scary. You have to have trust and faith that you're going to be okay because you're still in a world that isn't what you've been used to. Um, say you've always been, uh, I don't want to say, yeah, I, uh, like overweight all your life or something. And you, I talk about, talk about that because like it's something that I can relate with, right? Um, you've always been overweight all your life, or you've always been poor all your life, or you've always been in the sense of like lack all your life, not, not even just lack, but like you've always been in a certain, so you've always lived with your parents, you've always had, um, uh, people looking out for you, and then you have to now go off into the world, now you have to have sort of a, a weight that fits your age or whatever, or you finally start making a certain amount of uh like money that makes sense for your lifestyle it's a different phase right these these types of things are different phases 
and trust is not something that you can get from the outside. Everything on the outside can be telling you, oh, no, nah, things are a bit fucky out here. Um, and every, even on the flip side, things can be telling you that things are going to be okay on the outside, right? It can look like a rosy path. However, whether or not externally how things are looking, um, whether or not they're looking one way or the other, what counts is on the inside. Trust is in belt. Trust is in belt. So sometimes we have to make the decision to trust, make the decision to take that step forward and say, all right, well, this is the situation that it is. I am going to move forward anyway. I'm going to move forward in this way. I'm going to move in this sort of way, trusting. Not blindly, right? Don't do it blindly. Plan for contingencies, but also know that you can't plan for everything. You really can't. Um, and things are going to happen that are going to happen. There was a point I was going to make. Yeah, I still feel like someone's waiting, waiting outside the door. <laughs> I don't know what that's about. <laughs> but I forgot the point I was going to make. Um, it's, it's intrinsic. Trust is intrinsic. It's, it's a decision, but it's, it's, again, decisions are not just one and done. It's an everyday decision. If this is about people, trusting certain people, uh, it can be tough. <laughs> it can be tough. They, they also have to play their part in, in being trust, trustworthy and being trusted. Mm. Let me look into trust here. Actually, yeah, let's read trust first. R S T U Trust says this is a time for trust. Sometimes there is no yes or no to a question. There are situations where we are better served by not knowing what is to come so that the miracle can unfold before our very eyes. Like children opening a gift, part of the magic of our lives is found in the joy of surprise. Trust that your angels will have something amazing in store for you, even if they can't quite tell you what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know so many people who want to know what their angels are saying. Their angels are talking to them. Their guides are talking to them. And they don't know, what are they saying? What are they saying? And it's like, man. Just trust. And it's not, it's not easy. I say just, but it's not just. Right? It's not like the easiest thing to do. How I handle that and how I, I tell them is I say, trust that the moves you're making will be ones that are guided by your guides. That is the easiest way and that I can, that I can advise someone um, from my experience. It, where it comes to a point where you just say, you know what, Lord, let your will be done. I, I, I ask that you move through me. I ask that you guide my steps. I ask that you, you guide me. I can't hear what you're saying. I don't understand what the fuck you're saying. But um, I would like to think that the moves I make are moves that are guided by you, you know, taking me to where I need to be for your greater you know, showing of your power, of your being, whatever. And that's, that's how I proceed from acting forward. So it's take, taking it step by step, taking it day by day. Uh, it's something I, I've had to do myself. And it's something that if you ever email me saying, I don't know what to do, I don't know what my guides are saying, I don't know what all this stuff means, I'll say, well, breathe and um, pray about it. I, I would say pray about it. Uh, and, and ask and claim that what the moves you make are going to be the right moves that you need to make, period. <sighs> to be fair, what up, Libra? <laughs> Balance, justice, and need to consider options, mutual benefit, the law of cause and effect. So the protection message is injustice and iniquity are part of life, but they do not have to define your experience. This is a time when you may observe an injustice righted and fairly redressed. Perhaps you come to the rescue of someone else or are called to answer for a personal slight. <laughs> you will be amazed by the sense of power that surges through you when you stand up for yourself and others. This card also indicates a good time to advocate for others who are less fortunate. Wow. Choose your cause and commit to it because you can make a difference. One thing is for certain. If fairness is your intention, the situation will be resolved for the highest good of all. 
concern, for the highest concern through, oh my God, for the highest good of all concern through acts of kindness, empathy, and courage. You know, this is a very, very personal message to me as I read that. I was recently reading the paper. I'm in a different country right now. I was reading the paper in the country and uh, a domestic violence story kind of hit the news. Um, I was very upset, so I've planned uh, a, a letter to the editor because I've, I've done, I have a, with, with, my, with my master's and my, under, my, my bachelor's and just the way that I work in, in my personal life, social not, not social justice and just equality in the way that it needs in the in the way that I see it in in certain places and um creating a, a better impact for people um in life and well-being physically mental spiritual well-being are very important to me so this message really hits home because the person who was um victimized in my eyes may not have people standing up for them in this situation. Um, however, some random person, I don't know this person, they don't know me, I have no stake in their life, but what happened to them, I don't agree with, so I will be writing a letter to the editor, I will be posting an article about this, and I will be asking for people to be inflamed, I will be calling for people to contact this person to see if we can get a good lawyer who can fight for this person's case and claim self-defense as opposed to the nonsense that the magistrate has put forward. So to me personally, this message hits me on this day right now, this minute in, in my life. So I'm happy that the message is here and the protection message isn't so... This is actually really beautiful and it brings out a, a different essence to the reading, which says it's, it's, I guess it's not so much a different essence, it's more of a, an emphasis on the message that says sometimes things can, things can be messy, sometimes things can look and feel against you and different and like you it doesn't concern you or it's going to be scary you know leaving your parents home going out into the world excuse me my voice broke girl or um going into something you know things just being a little bit of a hubbub and you're doing something that requires for you to have inner inner strength trust inner faith trust knowing inside you that what you're doing is okay um, what you're doing is, is just and what you're doing is, is going to be, in the long run, okay. So, is it? In the long run, okay, This th there is something about a short term, or if it's not short term, there is something about some disturbance going on while you are moving, if that makes sense. So, there could be, for instance, in my situation, some backlash from people in, in my life or in the world at large, hey, you have no business sticking your nose in this, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, where do you come from doing this, this, that, and the other? It puts my name out. I'm sticking my neck out for this person who I don't know the whole story, but from what I read, um, no, you're not, no, I'm not okay with that. In any case, however this hits you, they're messages of encouragement, and I love this because sometimes if this was a tarot and this, the justice card came out in reverse, it would be like, oh, you know, this, this, that, and the other. But I would still sort of say with this trust here that there is a message saying, hey, there may be some adversity outside of you or even inside of you, really. And what, what, you, need, what, you, what you need right now is trust and in, in, in yourself and your cause and where you're wanting to be and where you're wanting to go. Let's go ahead and pull a, um, oh, you guys want to talk. That's strange. I was supposed to end this a bit ago, but, um, oh, that's weird, that's weird, that's a really weird playfulness, uh, attraction and release your ex, very interesting, and playfulness too, that's real here, why are you, why are you doing this? Oh, they're so clean. Attraction and release your ex. What are you kids doing out here? I don't get it. Why are they here?
The only thing that really comes to mind is unpleasantness. With attraction in reverse and release your ex. Or even overcoming something. Overcoming something and tying yourself to something else. Nice. Thanks. Overcoming something and tying yourself to something else. Does that make sense? <laughs> you know when you are going through a depression, everything sucks? Right? When you're going through a depression, everything sucks. Um, everything is sort of bleak, every day is the same, nothing is different, everything is dark, you just want to stay in bed, you don't really want to do anything, there's nothing worthwhile, you're in that sort of phase, right, not you, I'm saying like when you're in that sort of phase, you know that you're coming out of it when certain things begin to tickle your fancy, when you go to the doctor and they ask you questions like, have you been losing interest in things that used to be of interest to you? That's when they're checking for sort of depression. And when you answer yes to those things, that's a red flag for depression. Uh, when I was going through some of my health issues last this time last year, uh, that was some of the questions that were asked. They were asking me, and the, the concern was there. And um, they then started, but then I said, you know, but I've, I've gotten new interests. And they're like, oh, okay, so... What I used to be interested in fell to the wayside and I started having interests in other stuff. So it's, it's a shedding. I mean, people talk about ego death like it's drinking water in a first world country. Like, no, ego death is not the easiest thing. Ego death is a death of a self. Ego death is... A shedding of a skin that's been there for a while and there are certain tur turbulences that are going on through there so this could be another message with this but it's almost like if if you are if if you're going through that type of thing it seems like something new coming to not replace Take over that space that that old stuff used to take, take up. Um, this is like where you've been pining for someone for so long. You've been in a heartbreak phase, and you're not interested in anybody. Nobody really looks like it. No, nobody looks attractive. You've been living in the world for years or months or weeks, and there's just no other prospects because you're in your head about this person. And then one day you look up and you're like, oh, that person's real cute. And then you look to the side and you're like, oh, that person's cute too. And you see someone else and they smile at you and you're like, oh, hey. It's, it's those things where you're letting something go and something new coming to replace it. That, not that spark necessarily, but it's, it's something interesting. So let me put it this way because I do believe this is a message. I do. Especially with what I was just talking about. Sometimes... Or there could be something for some of you today, or in this sort of couple days, where if you notice that you are feeling passionate about something new, passionate about something different, or passionate about something, um, or if you're feeling like your attentions have moved or pivoted to something new, I don't, it, it could be a shiny thing. Um, and when I say, say shiny thing, I mean like a distraction. It could be that. But take that as an inclination for you getting back some of your own. So if you've been in a certain, like let's say this is like, this is like, this is like you never buying yellow, but all of a sudden you're like, you see a yellow shirt or whatever in a, in a store and you're like, oh, I might try that. That little thing, um, or you doing something out of pocket, out of your norm, uh, you t 
talk, saying to the waiter, I don't want this. Can I have something else? You're doing something, you're doing something different. You, it may be low key for some of you, like that yellow shirt or buying something in your closet that I'm so itchy. I got bit by mosquitoes. I should take anti-malaria, actually. <laughs> um, you doing something different or something coming your way that's different, that's a good sign. Just be on the lookout for that if you're doing something. Because you can read something. For instance, you can read something in an art, in, in the newspaper and be upset about it. But it's a whole different level of upset for you to write a le- fucking letter. <laughs> like, you care, okay? Um, it take that thing, even though no matter how unrelated it is to whatever these relate to for you, take that new thing, that, that interest, that passion, that spark, as confirmation for the fact that you are moving. It's... If, even if it's unrelated, it's connected. Especially if it's un- unrelated, it's definitely connected. Because it's, it's telling you that a part of you has woken up. A part of you has been rebirthed. A part of you... Ooh, this is so exciting. Jesus fucking Christ. Wow. A part of you has come, come around. Ooh, I think this is the tiptoe into the new phase. Shit. I'm going to close it here. Um, have an amazing... Ha- what a way to end the month. Man. What a way to end the month. Come through. And what I'm seeing here is it may not be even necessarily about the thing. It may not be about the yellow shirt or actually wearing the yellow shirt multiple times. It may just be a signal, a flag, that you have entered your toe into the new. That was like, how many messages is that? Like, two? <laughs> I don't know. Uh... Yay. Keep your light on, babe, and good luck.